welcome to the RV Entrepreneur Podcast, the weekly show for nomads, work campers, RVers, and entrepreneurs looking to earn a living or build a business while enjoying the RV lifestyle. This week's host is Kimberly Crossland. Let's settle in and enjoy the RV Entrepreneur Podcast brought to you by RV Life. Welcome to the RV Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host for this week, Kimberly Crossland, the owner of Roadpreneur and Cruising and Campfires, both businesses designed by an RVer, that's me, for RVers who are excited about living a life full of adventure. And today, I'm really excited to share my very first episode as a host of the RV Entrepreneur Podcast, and we're going to talk all about New Year, New Goals. This is not your average goal-setting podcast, and yet we're also not the average entrepreneur, right? We're going to go deep on five different questions that I'd love for you to think through as you're thinking through your 2023, as you're planning for what you want 2023 to look like and designing what you want your 2023 life to look like. So whether you have started a podcast, whether you have started a business, Or if you're just dreaming about hitting the road and living a more nomadic lifestyle, this episode is going to help you really flesh out what that looks like for you specifically and how you can make those 2023 goals a reality. So let's get to it. Okay, so you are listening to this podcast and you probably already know, and I probably don't need to even say this, but being an RV entrepreneur is very different than being a regular entrepreneur. That's a kind of a tricky term there, regular entrepreneur, right? Entrepreneurship in and of itself is very creative. It's very unique. It's not your typical lifestyle that people choose to live. It's not the traditional nine to five. This is very different than even remote work because there's no person to respond to. There's no person to hold you accountable. There's no person just telling you what to do on a JIRA board. You are designing everything from the ground up, from the ideas to the systems, to the processes, and that can be very difficult. And then when you add in the concept of RVing, well, now you have another element of your lifestyle that's also very unpredictable. You might not know which campground you're going to stay at. You might not know if you're going to get a blowout on the way, if there's going to be car trouble, RV trouble. There's a lot that goes into this lifestyle, and that's why we choose it. So everything I just said might have sounded a little bit heavy, but actually this is the fun of it. This is the life that we're designing because in addition to all those unknown factors and how flexible we need to be, there's so much beauty to it. You are able to choose more strategically how you want to show up in the world professionally. You're able to choose where you sleep at night. Who you're sleeping next to at night might be up in the air, but sometimes you can choose that if you're talking with friends or you're camping with friends. But regardless, being able to design that life is a really beautiful thing, and we're living in such a great time to be able to do that. So that is everything that you know. And whether or not you're listening to this podcast, having already an established business, or you're listening to this podcast, maybe dreaming about starting a business. The new year is a great time to reflect on everything you've done, where you've been, both in your rig and in your business, and where you want to go in the coming year. What do you want that life to look like? What do you want your lifestyle to look like? So on this podcast episode, I want to walk you through five different questions that I regularly do each and every year to think about where things have been and really get crystal clear on where I want the new year to take me. Because here's something that's true. If you don't have a plan, it's going to be very difficult to know those next steps and to navigate where you want to go. Just like you need a roadmap to get you from point A to point B, you also need a a roadmap to get you from point A to point B in your business and those income goals and those audience building goals. So that's what we're going to build together on this podcast episode today. If you haven't yet, Go cozy up in your favorite camping chair, pull up a blanket. If you're anything like me, you get very cold very easily and grab your favorite beverage, grab a a piece of paper and a pen, and let's really start to think through these things. By the end of this, you can absolutely hit pause during it if you want to write things down, but by the end of this, the goal is for you to walk away from listening to this episode with a much clearer plan in place of what you need to do next going into the new year so that you can meet those goals. All right. The very first thing I want you to think through, question number one, 
is what will you say no to? Setting boundaries is probably the best thing you can do for your business. It's the best thing you can do, especially given the limited number of hours that you have in a day and the limited number of hours you have because the rest are going to be spent adventuring. Remember, the beauty of the RV entrepreneur lifestyle is that you get to go out and choose how you want to show up. And that can mean setting some really healthy boundaries. But I get it because saying no is very hard to do. If you see an opportunity come your way, then you are more likely to say, oh, that sounds interesting. Let's go try it. We're adventurers, right? We love to go live in life of adventure. And so when we see those opportunities come our way, we need to have these predetermined boundaries of what we're going to say no to, because if we don't, so often we can go off course. So often we can say yes to something that's really going to actually burn us out in the long run. It's not going to align with our lifestyle or the business that we want to build. And that can be really problematic. If you've hung around me at all over in my roadpreneur space, then you've probably heard me say time and time and time and time and time again, the importance of empathy. Empathy in business is kind of, this, this practice goes back a really long time. This is not something new that I've invented. And yet it's probably the most overlooked thing in business that as business owners, as entrepreneurs forget to do. Not only for our customers, although we're really good at empathizing with our customers in the sense that we like to listen to them and understand their needs and answer those needs and and provide products or services that will help them with a specific problem. We're really good at that. What we're less good at is looking at our own needs and our own personal feelings and motivations and the solutions that will answer those motivations. We don't really listen to our thoughts as thoughts that will impact how we design our business. So so often we'll fall into this trap of the comparison game. We're looking sideways at our competitors and we're saying, oh my goodness, they're doing something different than me. I should maybe be doing that. They're starting this element of their business. Maybe I need to add that on so I can keep up. Or we look at the tools that they're using, where they're showing up, the platforms that you're using. And that can be very difficult and very, very distracting. So for this journal exercise, I want you to be really clear about what you're going to say no to in your business. Are there platforms you're not going to keep using or are there platforms you're not going to go down the rabbit hole of trying to use? Is there something that you say that looks cool, but it just is not for me right now. I don't want to go and figure that out. I personally have done that a bit with YouTube. I love YouTube. I love watching people on YouTube. I'm grateful for YouTubers. If you're a YouTuber, thank you because you provide me with a lot of information, education, entertainment, all the things. But I also know that I'm not great at video editing, nor is that where I want to put my time right now. When I'm in a position to hire a video editor and really lean into that channel, then I'll say yes to it. But for now, I've chosen to say no to it. This doesn't mean that I don't like to be on video. This does not mean that I don't want to record video. It doesn't even mean that I don't like video. As you just heard, I love watching YouTube videos. I just know that it's a no for me right now. And that's okay. So I want you to also internalize that a little bit. Spend some time thinking through what you want to say no to. And if you're not sure about that right now, I would love to encourage you to go through a very simple exercise for about the next five minutes. Go ahead and hit pause, come back when you're done, but set a timer for one minute and you're gonna do this for four minutes. I like to do CrossFit and so this is almost like a Tabata style approach. We're going to do one minute on, 30 seconds off, one minute on, 30 seconds off for four rounds. (laughs) So for the first minute that you're on, I want you just to journal on everything that you've noticed that you're thinking lately. What are those thoughts that are waking you up at 3 a.m.? What are those thoughts that seem to creep in as you're taking your dogs for a walk around the campground? What are those thoughts that seem to just keep popping into your head? And then journal on that. Write them down. Visualize what those things that you're thinking on a regular basis, what are they? What keeps popping into your mind? Then for the second minute of this exercise, you can take a 30-second break. But for the second minute of this exercise, I want you to look at how these are making you feel. How are you feeling right now? Are there different elements of your business that have you feeling really, really, really excited and lit up and like you just want to lean in harder to that element? And are there things that you're feeling that 
Like imposter syndrome, that's a common one that keeps creeping up. Are you feeling overwhelmed? What is it that you're feeling right now that you might want to adjust and you don't want to go into the new year feeling that anymore? Then I want for the third minute, I encourage you to write out what are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to your friends, your spouse about your business, about your entrepreneurial dreams? What are you saying about what's coming up ahead? That can be very telling about what you want to put out into the world and what you are putting out into the world. There could be a misalignment there. And then the final thing, the final minute of this exercise is I want you to write out what you're doing. Are you looking at things online? Are you watching YouTube videos? Are you listening to podcasts? You can obviously write that because you're listening to this one. Thank you very much. What else are you doing? Are you showing up in courses? Are you buying too many courses? Are you buying not enough courses? What are you doing in your business to take that next step forward? So spend some time and really work on empathizing with yourself. And as you do, you're going to start to see some patterns rise to the surface that can really show you what you should probably start saying no to. So this is a really good exercise to go in to shape the rest of our planning. So I encourage you, like I said, you can hit pause right now and go and do that exercise, or you can come back to it later. But this is a really good exercise to have in the back of your mind as we answer the next four questions. So let's get into those next four questions. The next question, as you plan what 2023 is going to look like for your life, for your business, is what will you plan to win? Now, I kind of highlighted that word plan with my voice there because winners plan. So it's not enough to say, I plan to make six figures in 2023. This is something I hear often. It's also a marketing tactic that I've heard used over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with it. Six figures sounds awesome. Who doesn't want to make six figures in a year or more? This is excellent. But when you plan something, it's not enough to just say that you're going to do that. It's also, you have to make a plan for how you're going to reach that. What will you sell to reach that? And I want you to do an exercise that I call backward mapping. Backward mapping is where you start with that end in mind and you work backwards. Okay, I want to make six figures. We'll just say $100,000 because that's an easy round number for us and it's six figures. Let's say you that's your goal. In 2023, I'm making $100,000. I am planning to win at that goal. But to get there, what do you need to sell? How much of it do you need to sell? Do you have different revenue streams? Can you pull from another or are you going to be adding another revenue stream? Backward map those goals so you can see, okay, by the end of the year, I need to sell this many courses or I need to get this many people in my membership every month or I need to sell this many items from my product line. As you backward map it, you now have a plan in place for what you need to do to win. That is going to be a very important indicator for the next question that we're going to ask ourselves. So again, you can either hit pause or come back to it, but really think through how you can plan to win. What do you need to sell in order to win? Because the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to prioritize how you're going to shape your business so that you can reach those goals. So prioritizing in your business can be very difficult, but also it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to give you yet another exercise that you can do to really set up those priorities. And it's really pretty simple. What I want you to do is draw an axis or a quadrant on your paper that you have. Like I said, curl up in your camping chair, get some pen and paper. We're, we're putting the pen to the paper. We're going to get old school with this. So just draw a quadrant, a big cross in the middle of your paper and start thinking through where are the things that I want to do? Where do they land on this axis? So the X axis straight across, that's going to be your cost or how many resources you're going to need to use it to accomplish this goal. And then the Y axis is going to be how easy is it? How fast can I get this out in the world? Now this varies year to year. This is why I like to come back to it often. I actually come back to this quarterly, but it varies because as you move through your business, you gain certain assets that you have that you can work with to create something really cool. or you have more resources to work with. Maybe you've brought on a team member in the last year and they can now they can help you with accomplishing this goal. But if you're a solopreneur, it might be a little bit harder, more resource intensive. So start to think through what are the easiest things to accomplish that are going to make the biggest impact in your business but require the fewest resources. That's where you know to lean in first. 
And on that list, as you start to map it out and draw it all over your quadrant, or just write it out, whatever works best for you. There's no magic here. It's just whatever works best for you. As you start to decide, I need to prioritize this because that's a quick win. And I already am like halfway there. I might as well just see it to the finish line and see what happens and really get this going before I start something new. This will help you to stop falling victim to that shiny object syndrome. This will also help you stop falling victim to that comparison game where you're looking sideways and saying, oh my goodness, I should be doing that. Or Where do I start? And my to-do list is a million miles long and I don't know how to plan on my business. This will help you get back on track. As our viewers, we love simplicity. We like ease. We like minimalism. We just want things to flow. And this is a great way to make sure that that happens. When you have your list, choose the top four things that you're going to focus on. The top four things that are the easiest and the most productive to focus on. And then you know what your next four quarters are going to look like. Quarter one, you're going after that first priority. Quarter two, the second priority, and so on and so forth. Now you've got your plan in place. You've backward mapped your year financially. You've backward mapped how many people you need to have in your audience so that you can meet those income goals. And now you've prioritized how you're going to do that. All right, the fourth question, what will you track? Because now we've talked about growing our audience, we've talked about releasing new products, we've talked about revenues. We need to be able to track all this. We can't just throw it out there and say, okay, I hope something sticks. I hope somebody shows up. We need to see what works. We need to get that data back. And we are living in the best, best, best time to get that data back into us. So we can look at statistics. If you're a YouTuber, you can look at your view time. You can look at how many views you have, how many subscribers you have. You can watch all of these statistics. Choosing now which metrics, what data you're going to look at and matters the most to you is going to help keep you on course throughout the year. In the business world, we call this the North Star metric. This can also be a constellation of metrics. Several different metrics are going to take you to that same destination, that same end goal that we set in number two, question number two, that plan that we're making to win. What are those metrics that you should be paying the closest attention to? This is not as easy as you might think. This is not a, just a dollar for dollar figure. Because if you just look at the dollars that you bring in, yes, that's important. You want to feed that bank account. We start a business so we can make money. And we start a business so we can make good money so we can fuel our lifestyle and have this freedom. But if we only look at our dollar for dollar, we're ignoring a huge other piece of that puzzle. We're ignoring the audience side of things. And so that well could be drying up and you might not be building that audience for your business. So as you continue to want to sell more and more, you don't have as many people there to market to. And we're also forgetting the retention side of things. Oftentimes our customers are our biggest advocates. They're the biggest referral network. If they're unhappy, then we're probably going to be losing them too. So focusing only at that red dot in the center of the target can sometimes really throw us off. Money is great. I love money. I think it's excellent. I think everyone should have money and not be afraid of having money. Definitely an abundance mindseted person. But I also firmly believe in looking at both sides of that transaction. What are you doing to keep people happy? What are you doing to keep them in your funnel? What are you doing to encourage them to share about your business? And encourage them to get more people in the door. What are some metrics there that you can track? A few of the metrics that I like to lean on are lifetime value. At Roadpreneur, I have a membership, which you can find by going to the RV Life Masterclass to rvlife.com. The Roadpreneur community is there. I will look at retention because if my members join and then they leave again, that's telling me that I'm doing something wrong. And no matter how much money I make at the front end, it won't matter because I'm not really showing up to serve them. And that's just going to cause everything to crumble over time. Not building a very firm foundation. Also, more importantly, that's not why I go into business. I don't go into business to not serve. I go into business to be of service to others. And so being able to have those retention figures, how long people have stayed in my membership, really signals to me, am I showing up? Am I giving them what they want? Am I answering their needs? Am I listening to them well enough? And I can adjust if I need to. And I have. And I can adjust and I can see if that builds retention or if I get negative pushback. Well, then I know I need to calibrate it. So really focusing on lifetime value is one of my core metrics. I always look at that because 
It tells me if I'm on track and I'm giving something that the market wants and needs. And then you also look at your audience building because like I said, you don't want that well to run dry. So I will track my numbers each and every month. How many people have I brought in on Instagram? How many people are listening to my podcast? How many people do I have on on my email list? Looking at that constellation of audience building numbers helps me to see how well I'm reaching an audience and, and getting in front of the people who I know I can help. And so now it's your turn. What are the metrics that you're going to track? Write down several of them. I encourage you to track several of them because typically one will say something, but it won't tell the whole story. So how can you add context with those metrics and really tell that full story of what's happening along your customer's journey from when they find you to when they buy from you to when, how long they stick around with you. So choose those metrics to track. All right. The fifth and final question of our goal setting for a new year, new intention, new goals, however you want to frame it. This is how we're going to make 2023 our best year yet. So question number five, and this one's really important, especially for the RV lifestyle. This is unique to us as RV entrepreneurs. And this is, what will you do to stay energetic? Running a business and RVing and seeking adventure and hiking and exploring and mountain biking. I'm a big mountain biker. All of that takes a lot of energy, especially running the business. But if you pour all of your energy into running your business, well, then you're defeating the purpose of being an RV entrepreneur because now you're not able to soak up all the rest of that lifestyle. So it's important that you know how you're going to fill your personal cup and your professional cup. It's a good idea for you to know yourself if you are an introvert or an extrovert or both. So for me, I'm what the, I guess you can call an introvert extrovert. I like to be alone. I work best when I'm alone and focused in in a quiet environment, but I love to be around people. I love soaking up that time as long as I can go back and decompress and have that time alone on the trails to ride my bike or ride my bike with a small group of people and just really have that alone time, that quiet time to kind of fill up my batteries again. As you go into 2023, You want to look at the same to make sure that you're not designing a business that's going to have you going full force steam ahead and drain those energy reserves. You're halfway through the year and thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. This is too much for me. Or I went off course somewhere. I need to get back on course because I'm missing that lifestyle that I was designing when I very first started out. For you, look at how you fill up those energy tanks. This is also a really good way for you to design your own business. Because if you don't do well showing up and talking for hours and on on end on Zoom, you probably shouldn't hold one-on-one coaching sessions all day, every day. On the flip side, if you love to talk one-on-one on Zoom and you leave those sessions feeling like, yes, I made such a difference and I love doing that and I could do that all day, every day, well then go ahead and add more Zoom calls to your schedule or plan retreats where you can be with people all day for a certain amount of time. It's really about understanding yourself. It's really about understanding how you feel the most energetic and how you want to show up in this world. And that truly is the cherry on the top of the cake of being an RV entrepreneur. It's really here where you can say, I built this business around my lifestyle rather than the other way around. And you can really cultivate this year of showing up in this world in a way that feels so, so good. Okay, I'd love to hear from you. I am over inside, as you've probably seen, the RV Entrepreneur Facebook group. So come on over and say hi, tag me in a post, and share with me what has come up for you during this exercise. Are there things that you're not sure how you're going to meet those goals, but you are planning to win, but you're just not sure how you're going to meet those goals? Are you needing a little bit of extra help to get moving in the new year? Or are you just camping in Arizona, which is where I'm based, and you want to just hang out and mountain bike, come and say hi. I love to connect with you. I do not ever want this to just be a one-sided conversation. So come and say hi inside the RV Entrepreneur Facebook group. And also, if you're curious about how you can start your business, go and head over to the RV Entrepreneur Facebook group and ask, ask the question. Say, this is what I'm really good at. Can you help me brainstorm? Because that's why that community is there. And if you're also interested in having some support going into the new year. Like I said, Roadpreneur is endorsed by RV Life and the RV Entrepreneur Podcast. 
So you can go to our masterclass.rvlife.com and waiting there for you is my membership where you get monthly marketing playbooks or also my course where I teach you the foundation of really building a solid business that lets you RV to design this life around your RV lifestyle where you can have entrepreneurship with healthy boundaries and really make solid money so you can plan to win and really reach those goals. I'd love to see you in any of those, the Facebook group, the membership, or the school. And I just would love to connect. So come and say hi, and I'll see you next month or talk to you next month on the podcast. I hope you have a beautiful new year. Bye, everybody. 